Welcome to the May 14th edition of War Paint Illustrated's War Paint TV. And we're turning the tables today. For the last three months, Shane Williams has been interviewing. He's been hounding me. He's talking Chiefs. I tell you what, now I'm going to turn the tables on my friend here, and I'm going to ask you all the questions you were going to ask me today. I might throw an opinion in or two, but okay. first and foremost, you were right about Eric Berry. I was wrong. I never thought the Chiefs were going to draft this guy. I thought they would trade the pick, but now you get your man because this is a guy you've been championing in for months. He's a he's too he's a talent too much. You couldn't pass on him. He was a you know the working out with Brandon Flowers, Emmett Thomas, the Hall of Famer is going to come here and be the Kansas City Chiefs defensive backs coach. Uh, with Brandon Carr and Brandon Flowers having a talent like Eric Berry sitting there at number five, you just couldn't pass on him. You you, you couldn't pass on him. And uh, that's what I loved about him. And his, and his hits, his playing on the field in college at Tennessee, I couldn't help but fall in love with it. You know, the other guy that's got me excited, too, is Kendrick Lewis. Um, you know, we had him rated as, like, the fourth or fifth best safety prospect coming out of college. And I saw some boards where they had him rated him 25th, 26th, 27th. I mean, now all of a sudden you got a secondary in Kansas City, like you mentioned, with Flowers and with Carr and with Barry. You add Lewis to the mix. Uh, John McGraw still there, so you've got your veteran guy. You got Donald Washington, who's a fourth-round pick a year ago. All of a sudden, Emma Thomas has got a lot of toys to play with because he's going to need every one of them because the front seven isn't as good as it was for some of these college programs that these kids came from. So, I mean, your opinion on just the secondary in the whole, how you think they're going to be able to impact this defense in 2010. I, I, I love it. And don't forget about Javier Arenas, the second second round draft pick at Alabama on the slot. He's, he excels at sacking the quarterback. They, they thought he was a good blitz cornerback. Uh, Emma Thomas has a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of tools to, to, to use, and I'm looking forward to that. You know, you, you want to see what's going to happen with the front three. Glenn Dorsey still at defensive end. Maybe. Can Tyson Jackson play Maybe. at the defensive end? You know, Sean Smith, you know, Without them getting Terrence Cody in the second round, without them, as of yet, picking up John Henderson, uh, they must be high on Ron Edwards and Sean Smith to be the final piece of that puzzle at nose tackle. What do you think of that? Well, I agree with you, too. And, and the one thing I like what Scott Pioli did in this draft is that, you know, generally you want to build your front seven and then you work toward the back. Uh, that wasn't an option for them this year. They found – you mentioned Arenas, who I failed to mention earlier – Great young quarter, the best blitzing corner to come out of college. And, I mean, we haven't had a really good one since Benny Sapp was here. And he wasn't great, but he was, he was effective. Um, so I, I think this really puts them in a position to where they can, they can tackle that defensive line. I think John Henderson is still a possibility. He's looking for mega dollars. He's not going to get it from the New York Giants. He's not going to get it from the Kansas City Chiefs. I think one of those two teams, before it's all said and done, it'll get done. Remember, June 1st is coming up. OTAs are starting for most teams. There's going to be a lot of veterans available. They're going to be out there on the open market, and I think the Chiefs are going to be really aggressive because I think they can win this division this year. I said it a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to say it again. I think they've got a great opportunity because as this division's coming down. If the Chiefs' ball bounces right and they can pick up these veteran guys, you know, maybe a Roy Williams or, or, or Creighton from Dallas, a couple of wide receivers that could help them offensively. But, uh, you know, I'm optimistic, and I know I haven't been very optimistic lately, and uh, you know my reasons for being pessimistic, but I really think the Chiefs have an outstanding opportunity this year, and uh, I know you feel the same way. Exactly. And, you know, Todd Haley, the last couple of press conferences when he has been asked by the media about John Henderson, he kind of smiles and says, you know, I only talk about the players that are here. He doesn't say straight face, no. You know, he makes it – it almost reminds me of 2006 when Herm Edwards – all off season was asked, what about Ty Law? Ty Law this and Ty Law that. And Ty Law didn't sign until July 29th, 2006. How do you remember that? Because I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but leading up to it, what I'm saying is it, everybody knew that Ty Law was eventually going to come. I kind of get that vibe with John Henderson. Do you? Yeah, I think it's a possibility. I mean, it, right now there's some hard feelings between Scott Pioli and his agent. You know, he were going to come to Kansas City, and he didn't. He, he went to New York, supposedly. He didn't get the money he wanted there. Um, you know, is he a 3-4? What is he in 3-4 defense? Can he play the middle? Can he play? And he says he can play both positions. The guy that intrigues me, though, is Albert Hainsworth. If he is truly available in trade, and even though he doesn't want to play nose tackle, I just don't think he likes Mike Shanahan. Now, you get Romeo Cornell within, a, within a five minutes of this guy, 
and I honestly think he can convert him if they can make the trade. I think a fourth or fifth rounder, believe it or not, gets it done. But they have to address the middle. I like Sean Smith. He's a good journeyman guy. He knows Romeo Cornell's 3-4 system, but they need that space heater, and I don't. I just don't want him to move Glenn Dorsey back to the inside. Not because I don't think he can do it. I think he's better suited for a 4-3 on the inside than the 3-4. And I don't think he has the girth that you need. You look at New England's defenses and how successful they were. What did they have? They had a 335-pound guy in the center of that defensive line, and that's what made him go. Exactly. He, Hainsworth isn't getting any uh, love from the ESPN and NFL Network guys. Yeah, they're, they're showing him, hey, you got your money. You should need to be playing for the skins. You need to be at the OTAs. Now, looking at these OTAs uh, coming up next week, what do you want to see from the Chiefs at OTAs next week? Well, I think the thing for me is just to sh see how the coaches are able to integrate with all these new players because you've not only got the draft picks that are going to be here, or at least the ones that don't have issues with graduation, some of the Pac-10 schools, they don't get done until January. These guys can't come practice until they've, they've actually completed their coursework. Um, for me, I want to see how they interact. You know, you're going to have some undrafted free agents who they got a first chance to look at uh, last weekend. There's going to be four or five of those guys I think are going to make this, ro make this roster. So I, I want to see how the coaches integrate with the new players. I want to see how the players react to it. I want to see Romeo Cornell and Charlie Weiss in action. I love these guys. The best additions that this organization has made in the entire offseason. And I think right now, if you're a Chiefs fan, you've got to be excited because you've got Super Bowl hardware on the coaching staff. You've got a Hall of Famer in Emma Thomas. You've got a guy in Todd Haley who took his knocks last year. And you know what? He created a lot of them himself by changing the offense, firing Chan Gailey, doing some things, getting these guys in their doghouse, even though he says there's no such thing as a doghouse. <laughs> we both know that there is. But I want to see how he matures in year two as a head coach because I think in some way it is a make or break year for, for Todd Haley as a head coach. And I think it's important that he establish himself as the guy that, that, that gives the respect due to his coordinators and goes out there and says, hey, these are my guys. I support them. I'm just going to kind of be the orchestrator of this football team. I'm going to let my top coordinators do their job. I think if he does that, again, I think the Chiefs have a great chance this year. What did you like about John Osamoa? You said on NBC 41 Sports that this guy can challenge Brian Waters for that left guard's position. Uh, what do you like about him? Well, I'd, I'd make him your starting left guard right now. I mean, I don't know where, what Brian Waters' future is in the organization. You know, he's wanted out. Uh, the last couple of years, he, you know, he's not going to show up for OTAs. Now, if, if Brian Waters shows up for OTA sessions, not the mandatory one that's in June, then then we're talking about a different guy. We're talking about a different ball game. Maybe he sees the silver lining. I mean, they add Casey Wegman, which was a good pickup. And uh, then Ryan Lilja, who was just a stroke of luck, as we already talked about before. But but John Esmo, he could play center. I hope they don't. I think he could be a, a, a guard who can start for this team for the next 10 years. Um, I think he needs to start right away. I think if there's any concern about Brian Waters, I think you let him go or you trade him. You get a second-day draft pick, and, and you move on. Because they have to develop a center of the future. They clearly are not doing it now. Rudy Neiswanger is not going to play center. I think Rudy would be a great guard. I think he'd be a solid backup you know, between uh, Lil Jill and Asamo on either side of the line. I think that would be great for him. Uh, I think, I think uh, Rudy's a good football player. He played hurt last year. I've never seen a guy have more bangs and bruises than him, and he never made any excuses. He went out there. But they, they were fortunate to get the second-best guard in the draft at the top of the third round. They did that a few, I don't know, about, what, 15 years ago with a guy by the name of Will Shields. It worked out pretty well for him. Same mentality, same attitude, same work ethic. Um, he, 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 he took pancake blocking to a whole new level in college. And uh, I think he only gave up two or three sacks his entire career. That's pretty impressive. So I think the Chiefs got a stroke of luck there. They've had some good fortune on the offensive line. Now let's take it to the next level. If Waters isn't the answer, they've got a guy who can be the future left guard for the next 10 years. And continuing with the draft, our last question I want to ask. You gave an A-. minus. You know, with, with Jack Harry, you sat down there 41 sports. You said A- minus for the Chiefs draft. What is, it about the, what is it about this draft that you liked? You know what I loved about this draft more than anything else? They had a plan and they executed it. Unlike a year ago where they just kind of took these guys, they took the best available athlete. You had two scouting reports because you had Peely's guys and you had Peterson's guys. You had personnel guys who were none of his guys. They were all Peterson's guys. No knock on Carl Peterson. Carl did his job. He made Clark, uh, Clark and Lamar Hunt a lot of money. But Peely came in this year and he had an opportunity and he had a plan, they executed the plan, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it's going to work out. Chiefs Insider Nick Athen, I'm Shane Williams. Until next time, keep it right here at WarPaintIllustrated.com.